Hello, I've recorded this um, YouTube video to be a refresher on how to record the transaction for the sale of equipment and more importantly on how to find the amount of additions to property, plant, and equipment when it comes to finding the purchase of equipment for the statement of cash flows. So let's refer to the example that I gave in class. And this was an example where a company sold equipment for $10 in cash. The original cost of the equipment was $400. And that piece of equipment had accumulated depreciation of $380. So let's first record the journal entry for the disposal of the asset. And we went over the steps that have to be taken to record that transaction and the first step you wanted to do was to record the amount of cash received. So we're going to have a debit and we're going to have a credit. The amount of cash that was received in this transaction, sale of the equipment, was $10. So $10 of debit for cash because cash was increased. The second step on recording a disposal of an asset is to remove the asset from the books of the company. And we're going to decrease that asset, so we're going to credit it. So we're going to have a credit to property, plant, and equipment for the original cost of that equipment of $400. The third step is to remove the accumulated depreciation associated with that equipment. And we said that was $380. So we're going to have A slash D, which means accumulated depreciation. And that is a debit for $380. As you recall, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset and it reduces the amount of the original asset, the original cost of the equipment. And let's remember, your debits have to equal your credits. So right now we have only $390 of debits, but we have $400 of credits. So we need a debit in the amount of $10 and that's going to represent the loss on the sale of the equipment. So we have loss on sale for $10. And you can see we have debits totaling $400 and we have credits of $400. So your debits equal your credits, that means you're at least in balance. That's how to record the transaction. We went on with the example and we wanted to look at two different accounts. We wanted to look at the property and plant and equipment T account, and we want to look at the accumulated depreciation T account. So let's put those down here. We've got property, plant, and equipment. And we're going to have accumulated depreciation in this example. And we talked about having a beginning balance and an ending balance in each one of these accounts. So we have a beginning balance in property, plant, and equipment of $2,000. And we have an ending balance of $2,600. Let's draw a line over here. And we also have a beginning and ending balance in accumulated depreciation. Beginning balance is $1,000. Credit. And we have an ending balance of $720 in that account. And we want to take a look what happened. So the other thing we're going to do is we want to post, we want to post this transaction for the disposal of the asset. We want to post only two pieces of it. We're going to post these two right here. The credit to property plan equipment. Let's post that over here at $400 and let's post the debit to accumulated depreciation for $380 and those represent what the sale right sale of an asset and again what we're looking for is the cash flows associated with property plant and equipment so let's take a look at a preliminary balance here and we would have a preliminary balance in this property, plant, and equipment account 
of a debit of $1,600. That's a $2,000 debit minus the credit of $400 gives us $1,600. And in the accumulated depreciation account, we're going to have a net credit of $620. Well, we did not make a math error here, but we're looking for a missing transaction, a transaction that we uh, are not aware of at this point in time. So we have a property plan equipment account with a preliminary balance of $1,600, and we have an ending balance of $2,600. Somewhere along the way, there was a purchase of equipment for $1,000. That's representing a purchase. company obviously spent some money to acquire some additional property plan equipment and their journal entry must have been something like this. It was a debit to property plant equipment for $1,000 and a credit to cash for $1,000. It's the $1,000 in cash that we're interested in. What does that represent? Well, that's going to represent an outflow of cash. That is an outflow right here of a thousand dollars. When we prepare the statement of cash flows we want to be sure that when we prepare the section for cash flows from investing activities that we show this thousand dollars as an outflow of cash for the purchase of equipment. There's also another cash flow here with regard to the equipment and that is specifically dealing with the sale proceeds the sale proceeds when we sold this equipment for ten dollars that ten dollar cash proceeds from the sale is an inflow of cash that ten dollars from the sale is an inflow of cash that's going to be shown on the statement of cash flows it's going to be shown in the cash flows from investing activities as a positive number proceeds from the sale of equipment so you got two cash flows and this one is going to be what an inflow isn't it this is an inflow of cash the additions are an outflow of cash let's take a look at the accumulated depreciation account the accumulated depreciation account is showing us some interesting things. We have a beginning balance of $1,000, we have an ending balance of $720, and we recorded the disposal of the asset that had accumulated depreciation of $380, bringing our preliminary balance down to $620. But we have an ending balance of $720, so something happened there. Something kind of, some other transaction occurred during the year in our business to bring the balance to $720. There was a credit in accumulated depreciation for $100. That can only represent one thing, and that would be depreciation expense. This $100 credit represents depreciation expense. That journal entry must have been something like this. Debit to depreciation expense for $100 and a credit to accumulated depreciation for $100. Why is that important? That's important because, once again, when we prepare the statement of cash flows during the first section, the cash flows from operating activities, we need to make adjustments for net income. Remember, the section of the statement of cash flows for cash flows from operating activities starts with net income. We make various adjustments to arrive at cash flows provided by operating activities. One of the first things we have to do is make adjustments for non-cash expenses. And as you can see, depreciation is a transaction that does not affect cash. We have a non-cash expense of $100 right here. 
Depreciation expense is a non-cash expense. So when we prepare the statement of cash flows, specifically the section on operating activities, we want to add back. You're going to add back depreciation of $100. So those are two important things that you need to know when preparing the statement of cash flows. You need to look at two T accounts. You need to look at the property, plant, and equipment account. You need to look at the accumulated depreciation T account. And keep in mind that there was a sale transaction. Post those transactions so you can find two things. You can find cash used to purchase equipment, in this case $1,000. And you need to find depreciation expense that was recorded for $100. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that's a reminder of what happened in class when we talked about disposal of an asset and identifying cash flows with regard to the statement of cash flows. I hope that was helpful. Thanks a lot.